Do you know what tsuyoi means? Tsuyoi, strong. Hi, strong. So now you have to learn the kanji for tsuyoi. So tsu, sorry, tsu, yo, and then e. Tsuyoi. Can you read the sentence for me? Hi. Um, oto, oto wa tsuyoi. Hi. What does this mean? Um, loud voice, a loud sound. Loud sound, yes. Hi. Strong or loud sound. Um, do you know this kanji? Kanji koe. Koe, yep, which is actually voice. Can you read the sentence for me? Chisan no koe wa tsuyoi. The chisan voice is strong, it's loud. Yes. Hi, perfect. Our next word is shawa gareru. Um, this is not the common pronunciation of this word. It's normally sha I think sha sha something like that. Sha, it's a different word, but this is how it's pronounced in this book. Kind of give it like an oldie kind of feeling. But yeah, sha ga wareru is a do verb and it means to be hoarse. Like arr, arr, kind of I like that kind of karaki voice that um old man might have kind of shagareru. Shagareru. Hi. Shawagareru. Hi. Shawagareru. Can you read the sentence for me? Hi. Um Jisan no Tsuyoe Koe ga Shiwagareru. The the voice of Jisan is strong. The strong voice of Jisan is rough. Nice. Right. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Do you happen to know this kanji? Chikara. Yep. Power. Or, what was it? Ryoku. Uh, ryoku is normally how it's pronounced when it's married. In general, when this is pronounced as ryoku, it's going to be in the second position in the kanji. So right now it's in the first position. So it's actually being pronounced as chikara. Chikara. And then the next word right here is normally pronounced as chiyoi, but there's some ren daku here, which is also known as voicing. Do you know how this might be read a little bit differently? Uh, um, ren daku is normally it is suyoi, but it's not suyoi. So it's zuzoi. Hi. So zuzoi? This, this right here, this. Ten ten marks is going to be added to the t. T with ten ten marks is um z, so it's pronounced with a z sound. Chikara zioi. Uh, if you're typing this on your keyboard, you'd spell it with a d. You'd do d u, but it's more like a z sound. Chikara zioi. So it make the same sound as su with the ten ten, right? Yes. They both make the z sound. Yes. Yep. Um, so what is the te form of shagareru? Sh shagawareru. Shagawarete. Warete. With no ten ten marks. No ten ten. Um, okay. Our next word is kozo. Kozo kind of means like kid, but in almost like a brat kind of way. Like you brat. It's not like, so you probably shouldn't use this in your day-to-day -day life to refer to a child. Gives you kind of like a disgruntled kind of feeling. Kozo, like you're like little brat, but it's not like the worst thing you could call a kid. <laughs> Does that makes any sense? Kind of like the word brat, really. Like brat isn't that bad. P pretty much the same. Okay. Brat. Let's go read our line from the book. Hi. Oi, Kozo. So I haven't had a specific lesson on this ga, but do you know what it's doing here? This ga is a but. Yep. So context, the subject has been dropped. The subject, though, is the koe, isn't it? The person that said, oi, kozo. This right here, the act of saying this was, shi wa gareteiru. 
So what kind of tone of voice I, did someone say oi kozo in? The um the voice is rough, a rough voice. Right. Um it was a rough voice but strong. Exactly. A rough voice voice but strong. Do you know what oi kozo means? Oi. Hey. Kozo. Yep. You brat. Yep. Hey brat. <laughs> Um, so a while ago we saw Jitto Mitsumeru. Do you uh mitsu mitteru? Jitto mitteru. Do you know what jitto means? What kind of sound effect the meaning of it is? Jitto. Jitto. Suddenly. Suddenly. It's not suddenly. Jitto means to be still. Uh... To be kind of fixated. So jitto. Uh, mitteru means basically you're just staring at something without blinking, not moving, just maintaining eye contact, going ji. So sometimes Gee. you might see jitosuru. That kind of just means you freeze. You don't do anything but like pause exactly where you are. Hey. Um, our next word is mazui. Mazui has the aji in here, which is taste, and fu, which is like un. So this means bad and can be used to refer to food tasting bad. Right. But it doesn't have to be for food tasting bad. It can be bad in general, which is what we're seeing in the book. Mazui. Yeah. Okay. Let's go that, read. Yeah. Does that mazui mean has the same meaning as umakunai? Meaning it doesn't turn out well. I guess Remember we learned that one. Yeah, umaku? um, we we learned um, um, umaku iku, which is to go well, and that does have umai, um, umai in it, and that does have to do with doing well. But if you were doing umai to refer to yumminess, you would probably change the kanji. So this right here has um, taste is beautiful, versus. Hi ups to hand so like this is stones up also in jozu right. up hand so i guess it could be kind of related but mazui is less about the you wouldn't really use mazui to refer to someone's skill not really it's more like used to refer to a situation or um food i would say right Okay, let's go read from our book. I see. It's more like yabai. Yes, yabai. Very similar to that. Basically the same. Mazui zo, ore wa chitto shite ta. Hi. Oh no. Um. I, I froze. Exactly. I freeze. So do you know what the zo is telling us? I think this is the first time we've seen this. Zo. Zo. So it's like um Yeah. Zo is like yo, isn't it? It is. It is the same as yo. It's a very like manly masculine yo, so it's more aggressive than yo by a little bit. So he's saying it's he's basically saying it's really bad with the zo there. That's what he's all. Our next word is surudoi, which means sharp. And because this shows up so much in the book, it is going to be a kanji I'm going to force you to learn. It has money in it for some reason, gold. <laughs> and I'm not sure what that is, but inside of it has brother legs. Uh, Ani. Yep. Ani. Um, but yeah, surudoi is sharp. Surudoi. Um, next is metsuki. Um, do you know what metsuki means? Metsuki. Tsuki is to attach. Hmm, yeah. To, to, it, um, it means, to make um, eye contact? It's a good guess. It's actually your face, your, like, facial expression, kind of, but focusing on your eyes. So your, the expression expression of the eye of the eye yeah metsuki 
Oh, I came across a word while reading Lugan Rugen Rugen Lagen. Gurin Lagen. Um, where he used the expression of the thing right before the mouth, as in the expression of the mouth. Mm. He had the kanji saki and then the kanji kuchi. Mm. Mm. Or it might have been the other way around. Kuchi saki. Kuchi I don't remember. <laughs> that was a couple days yeah. ago. But yeah, it's I probably it... related. So this is the expression that's portrayed by your eyes. Yes. So in English, you might say the look in someone's eyes rather than the um, look in his eyes. Hi. Um, now, do you remember how this is pronounced? Something doi. You're right. Doi. It's su and then ru. Suru doi. Suru doi. Hi, suru doi. Suru doi. What does suru doi mean? Sharp. Yeah, suru doi. Suru, suru doi. This can refer to the actual sharpness of an object or more metaphorical, just like the word in English. Can you read this sentence ah. for me? Okay, so suru doi metsuki de miru. Hi. So this with is bad, sharp... like the tool. Hi. Hi. So with a sharp. Francis says look. Look. Yeah. With a sharp look, I stare, I, I exactly. gaze. I see. To see to see with a sharp look. Hi. Hi. Perfect. So miru is to look. Do you know what orosu means? Look down. Yes, mi orosu together would mean to look down. Uh, I did just say it out loud, but do you know how we could combine these two words together to make one compound word? Miri, or, miri orosu. So that's a good guess. However, miru is actually a ru verb, not an u ah. verb. So what would be the stem so, form of miru? We just drop the ru. Yep. And it will be mi orosu. Exactly, mi orosu. So you'll see mi a lot of times will be added just stuck on top of something like this with a verb and then mi to compot to say how we look at something. Super common in Japanese. Okay. Like mi hari, for example. Haru. Well, this would be hari for now. This is like, I believe, to keep watch on something. Uh, might not be, so don't memorize that. But that's what that's stick in my head. Hi. Perfect. So what particle would we have if we said Khan looks down at me? At me. Hi. So it has to be Khan wa ore o. Yep. Miyorosu. Miyorosu. Perfect. Khan will look down at me. Okay. Let's go look at our next sentence. Does it also mean that I could use ni? Look at me, ore ni, miorosu. That, that would mean the working? look in the direction of me versus looking at me. So if they're not looking at you, but maybe looking through you, you might be able to use ni. But that wouldn't be like a normal use because that'd be like the direction you're looking rather than what you're looking at. Hmm. I guess I'm still a bit weak on the ni and o. And generally, because you just kind of have to mind, memorize it. Yeah, because you know how they kind of map onto the English mm -hmm. word in terms of at Hi. or by or on or something like that? Totally. Mm, okay. It can definitely be hard. All right. So this one is Jisan ga suru, suru doi. Perfect. Metsuki de ore o miyoroshite. Miyoroshita. Miyoroshita. Mean, the chi-san gave a sharp look at me. Down at me. Yes. So, in other words, Ji-chan is quite a bit taller than Khan. Khan, Ji-chan, sharp look down that way. 
I wasn't told what I drew. <laughs> mm, you naughty boy. Bad me naughty kozo. Um, our next <laughs> word is chinmoku, which I think is composed of the sink and the shut up. It means silence. That's not how that Chin- word is spelled. Silence. Moku. Chinmoku. Um, this kanji, do you happen to know how this is read? This is tuzuku. So tuzuku to continue is like the subject is continuing. It's the ga tuzuku. Well, tuzukeru is to make something continue. I just want to have this difference pointed out because it's kind of confusing and what because to say to continue and be like uh is it this is the uh, no intent apparently version uh so you wouldn't say oh here that'd be bad but you would say oh down here oh to do get it which is like a kind of a weird thing in japanese to continue so how would this, you uh, this this is exactly like the pair that we learned earlier I think it was kiku, and then the other one was kiku. Koeru? Okay, what was it? No, it's not. I don't remember. Kesu and one kiru? With the... There's kieru and mm-hmm. kesu. We learned that. Um, that'd be kiku and kikoeru. I remember this is pair that was exactly like this one. Just the difference was the the stem. Could but be um kairu, I'll maybe? Remember kairu. When... And kaesu, that might be. This is a uh, to return. One is I return myself, and the other one is I return something. There, there's a lot of these in Japanese. These little group right. verbs. But yeah, how would you say Suzuku. the silence continues? The silence, chinmoku ga tsuzuku. Perfect. Chinmoku ga tsuzuku. Chinzoku wa Yes. This one feels a little bit dramatic, but you could definitely say that, which uh the book does. Like for example, in our previous sentence, this ga is being dramatic here. So it's saying the grandpa. Give me a the old man, give me a look. Okay. Mm. Osoroshi. Osoroshi is like terrifying or a scary thing. So it's not to feel scared, it is to be scary. Osoroshi. It's something to feel fear for. Sh- the kanji shows up in kyofu, which is Hi. fear, fear, and also in um, dinosaur, I think. Kyoryu, which is scary dragon. Dragon. Yeah, so scary. Osoroshi. Okay. Osoroshi. Let's go read our Osoroshi. sentence from the book. Ga tsuzuita. Chinzoku. The scary silence continued. Exactly. The terrifying silence continued. So, atatakai means warm and naru is to become. How would you say to become warm in Japanese? Atatakunaru. Perfect. That's Atatakakunaru. exactly what you say. Atatakakunaru. Perfect. And that is exactly what I wanted you to make. You could... Yeah, that's exactly what I want you to make. Perfect. Atatakakunaru. Hardest word for uh, Japanese learners to say. Atatatatatatata. This is one you've had struggled in the past with. Do you remember what this word was? Omoi. Hi, omoi. Heavy. Nice. And next we have the adverb zunto. So it ends with to. This is quickly and vigorously. Um, it means the opposite if the verb's in negative form, but that's like kind of like a confusing thing in Japanese with a lot of their adverbs. They tend to do exact opposite meanings depending on the verb. But yeah, zunto is quickly and vigorously. Zunto. Um, so how would you zunto. combine omoi and naru together to make to become heavy? 
o omoku naru. Perfect. Omoku naru. Nice. Now, can you read this sentence for me? So, hi. Real quickly about so this zunto. Hi. It's is it similar to the zutto, as in right away? Yeah, zutto is quickly, isn't it? You think about sutto. Sutto. Su sutto. Yes. A lot of times, sound effects will sound if they sound similar, they tend to have similar meanings. Um, zun is more violent than su, so su is pretty quiet, right? Su. You know, so that's quick, mm. but it doesn't have that. I so a lot of times, if something's voicing going on, it's going to be a louder noise. So zun and su are pretty similar, so they're both kind of like fast sounds. Uh, hi. Hi. Zun to atatakaku natta. It violently, um, or overwhelmingly become warm. Yes, became violently warm fast. Okay, now let's go read our text from the book. Poketto no naka no mado seki ga zunto omoku naru atatakaku naru. The magical stone inside of the pocket um, violently uh, quickly became um, heavy and became warm. Or, Perfect. Um, not, not became, become become warm yep. and become heavy. Theoretically, it's be it will become warm, but it, it just kind of has to do with weird tenses in Japanese for writing books. Um, it is, it will become warm. So if it was like past tense, then it'd mean it's already warm. But here it's kind of continuing to become warm, I guess. Um, our next word is hedu. Right now we don't need to learn the kanji, but way in the future we'll, we'll be learning the kanji because they don't they have it in um compound words, but they don't have it as a verb on itself. Hedu is an u verb that means to decrease. Hi. Hedu. So that was part of the sentence I read the other day mm. where he say hara ga hetta. Yeah, exactly. Hara ga hetta. So a lot of times this won't have kanji because it's a kind of complicated kanji, but that is what shows up in here. So my stomach has decreased. It's saying the stomach is empty. Hara ga hetta. Um, can you read this sentence for me? Maho ga what do you think this means? Meaning, this whole whole is like the way okay. off, right? The yes. method. The method of magic. So this is just magic um, in English. That's how we translate maho as like in general. Okay. The magic is decreasing. Perfect. The magic is decreasing. So it hasn't hit its limit yet, and it's continuing to decrease. So this kanji you will be forced to learn is hara, which what does hara mean? Um, hara is a stomach. It is. It is stomach. With the belly. Yeah. So for whatever reason, we have um, every day and nighttime as well. And apparently hitting your stomach when you get fed every day. I don't know the meaning of this kanji. I always feel like but it means person. I'm thinking I'm thinking this hara is referring to the region of the body where your belly is. Yes. I'm not sure if it's referring to the actual organ that digests food. So that has to do with I don't um, think so. So you know, when you mention that, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's pronounced differently. I think onaka is more about the stomach itself, but the kanji is the same for onaka versus um, hara. But at the same time, I'm not a right. biologist, so it is quite possible. Because I'm keep. Oh, it might be e then. Because you know, like how, you know how they say harakiri, harakiri, mm -hmm. meaning like. The, the the ritual the ritual suicide of the samurai mm -hmm. is to cut open the at area 
yeah. the belly, not not the stomach, which is like True, up true. near the middle region of your chest. Yeah. So the the Japanese notion of hara is it's all the way down at the belly button. Probably. I think Which is where you tend to feel hungry. I um, I wouldn't know for sure what word they'd use if they're phys physically talking about a stomach. It's probably e, since I Google it, which comes from like the Chinese stomach, I guess. If they wanted to do it in a scientific context, but I don't know that for makes sure. sense. But that, I... yes, you're right. Um, I'm gonna skip this one because you already knew that answer. Um, so da. Is that copy that goes at the end of sentences like skida or whatever? Um, how would you put da into nai form? Do you know? Isn't it janai or yes. arimasen? It is janai. And you're right that ja arimasen is something that you've probably been taught in class. Specifically, um, I was looking for de wa nai, which is the exact same de thing as janai. So dewa can be slurred as ja. So dewa arimasen is the polite form. Arimasen comes from the verb aru, and the negative form of aru is nai. So in polite, as in acquaintance Japanese, you'd say dewa arimasen or ja arimasen if you're being a little bit slurry. But if you're in this kind of book and novels and stuff, you're going to see dewa nai. Is what you're gonna see. This is the um, the close bond. Uh, you kind of think of the reason why books talk to you like you're close is that they want to connect with you when you're reading, rather than feeling a little bit standoffish. So essays and stuff will end with dewa nai, but if you're talking, you're supposed to end with dewa arimasen. You know, with that mas form. And if you're talking to your boss, you would say like degozaimas or something. I don't know what you'd say. <laughs> Yes, it would be dewanai. So dewanai ka and janai um, basically have the same meaning. It is used kind of like with a rhetorical kind of like question like, oh, wouldn't you like to do something? Dewanai ka. So it's like a way to invite someone to do something. Uh, in general, in Japanese, if you're inviting someone, you use negative form with like some kind of question at the end. Like tabimasen ka would be like, would you like to eat? So it's like a, one of those little quirks of Japanese is negative form with question is normally an invitation or sometimes it'll be like a, isn't it nice or something. So a while ago, we touched on how certain particles and stuff do not like to touch verbs. They think they have cooties. Da, which is a copula, is very similar. It's more similar to a particle than it is to a verb. Um, grammatically speaking. So da does not really want to touch verbs. It thinks it has cooties. So if you were going to have da, if you wanted da at the end of your sentence for something, you need to have something in between the da and the verb, and which would be koto or no, depending on if you're talking about something in general or if you're talking about one specific occasion. And we're going to look at these two example sentences in a moment. Right now, it's time for us to uh, start our next uh, meeting. So see you in two seconds. <laughs> 